Honey, I'm home. Kids, that's it. Coming, Mom. Assalamu alaikum, Dad. Wa alaikum assalam. Are you ready? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Family Circle a show which is dedicated for the entire family for the young and the elderly In the show inshallah ta'ala we will be covering an explanation of a selection of ahadith from the well-known book Riyadh al-Salihin written by Imam al-Nawawi رحمه الله تعالى in this series, we will be, inshallah, covering a selection of ahadith from Riyadh al-Salihin written by Imam al-Nawi. We're going to be looking at the various virtues pertaining to different acts of worship. We're going to be looking at actions related to the heart, such as having taqwa of Allah, sincerity, having sabr, etc. We'll also be looking at the various different etiquettes that every believer should be upholding and be implementing in their day-to-day -day lives. The unique feature of this book really is that it's a book that every Muslim can benefit from. The young, the elderly, the practicing, and maybe even the not so practicing Muslim. So it's a book really that the entire family should study together, to ponder on, reflect over, inshallah ta'ala. So really I encourage everyone, if you have siblings or parents or children, all of you lot to come together to sit down and learn some beneficial knowledge, inshallah ta'ala, that will benefit you in this life and in the afterlife, inshallah ta'ala. And the structure of the show is such that by the end of the show, I will be posing some questions for all of you to research and to try and find answers for. And inshallah, if you log on to the, uh, to the show's website, you will find the answers available for you in the downloadable pack. Uh, if you download the answers, inshallah, you can discuss them together with the entire family, inshallah. So really try and take advantage of this show. Um, get your families together, inshallah ta'ala. And as I mentioned before, really try and benefit from uh, this show and attain some beneficial knowledge by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this episode, we will be looking at the first chapter from Riyadh al-Salihin. And the first chapter really is a very very important chapter and you find most books of hadith they really begin with this chapter chapter of ikhlas sincerity and perfecting one's intentions one's niyyah imam an nawi rahimahullah he says chapter one babul ikhlas wa ihbari niyyah fi jami' al a'mal wal aqwal wal ahwal al bariza wal khafiya the chapter of ikhlas, sincerity, and having an intention for all actions, words and states, outward and inward. <clears throat> In this chapter, the author, rahimahullah, he speaks about this very important action of ikhlas. And subhanallah, if we were to reflect over this important process of ikhlas, of purifying our intentions for the sake of Allah, we will realize that it is one of the most important actions that every Muslim should work for and, 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 and that needs to engage in. The reason being is because we will find that most people's intentions are somewhat tarnished, either because they want to do actions to please other human beings, they do acts of worship in order to gain status, or for many people, many acts of worship have, have become mere habitual actions, uh, devoid of any spirituality or any real connection with our Creator. Therefore, it's very important that we strive to purify our intentions. It's a very difficult thing to do. Imam Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, he said, that ma alajtu shayin ashadda alayya min niyyati innaha tataqallabu alayya that I haven't, I haven't dealt with anything more difficult in my life than to purify my uh, intentions or to work on my intentions because it cons my intention continuously changes from one state to another so this great Imam Sufyan al-Thawri Allah gave him that, that tawfiq and ability to acknowledge and to recognize really the difficulty when it comes to purifying and keeping one's intentions pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, another great scholar, Ibn Abi Jamra, he also said that, 
you know, I wish that there could be uh, just a scholar who would sit down and his sole task would be to teach people about their niyya, about their intentions. So this process of uh, ikhlas and, and, and working on purifying our intentions, it's very, very, very important. And notice how I've referred to ikhlas, sincerity, as a process. This is because if you look at the word itself, let's just break down the word ikhlas. Ikhlas is derived from the, the from the root word khalusa, which means to be uh, free from an impurity or free from something which is, has been blemished. And the word ikhlas, it's the verbal noun or the gerund, to refer to uh, the, the process of purifying something. So sincerity is a process of purification. Now that means a lot when it comes to uh, explaining the default state of man that really indicates that our default state is that our intentions are somewhat you know tarnished and they're not completely pure and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you think about it that's the reality of man man Allah has created man uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created man very weak وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا man was created weak he has many, def- he has many defects uh, within his characteristics and within his mannerisms and it's important that as human beings we acknowledge that, that we all have weaknesses, especially when it comes to our uh, intentions. So I believe that when we look at this topic of sincerity, we need to have that introspection whereby we look to ourselves and we acknowledge that uh, we have faults with our intentions. Uh, that's the default state of all human beings. And so and from from this point, let us acknowledge uh, our weaknesses and our need to purify and work on our intentions. So we spoke about ikhlas and the author rahimahullah he says babul ikhlas wa wal niyya and ihdar al niyya and uh, having an intention ihdar al niyya having an intention for all actions words and states. So the word for niyya so the, sorry the word for intentions in Arabic is niya, niya. So we've mentioned ikhlas, sincerity, and now the word niya, which means one's intentions. Now, what is an intention? For many people, intentions, um, it's just a statement of the tongue or something that we say upon the tongue, like before you fast or before you pray, for example, you say you utter some words, for example. Maybe you have been taught this when you were young. And many people think that is the reality of the intention. But that is not really the case. The intention in reality is a driving force behind an action. It's the thing that pushes you to do the action in the first place. It's not just a mere statement of the tongue. It's the driving force. It's like, for example, when a person is very hungry. They go to the kitchen to eat food. What was the thing that pushed them to go to the kitchen? It was the hunger. So that driving force is what pushed them to do the action. Likewise, when it comes when it comes to our acts of ibadah and worship, there has to be a driving force that pushes us to do uh, those actions. Uh, what is that driving force? That is the intention itself. And unfortunately, what you'll find is that with many people, their intentions aren't really there to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For, for many of the actions have just become mere habitual actions. Like when we wake up in the morning, we just you know go to the bathroom, brush our teeth. It's it's such a habitual thing. It it's not it doesn't really have any deep meaning to it. And so it's important that we understand what the reality of the intention is. The the intention is the driving force behind each action and we should remember that. And the author, he mentions uh, having an intention for all actions. It's important that we strive to have a good intention, not just for acts of ritual acts of worship, but even the mundane affairs that we do on a day-to-day, uh, on a day-to-day basis, whether it be, for example, cleaning ourselves or wearing our clothes. Uh, these actions can be turned into ibadah just by having a good intention. And some of the scholars they used to mention that the salihin, the righteous, only attain the right their status of, of piety because of their ability to turn um, day-to-day affairs into acts of worship because of their intentions. 
So for example, if a person wears his clothes, he wears it with the intention to cover his aura, to his private parts, and in order to have modesty and to have haya, that a person would be rewarded for if they have that intention. Likewise, if a person was to clean himself and was to put a perfume on himself, for example, to smell good, because he remembers the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah jamilun yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. And so the person wants to adorn himself when he goes to pray, for example. You know, having intentions in all of our actions, even when it comes to eating food, we eat so that we have, for example, uh, strength in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, ikhlas, aniya, sincerity, working to purify our intentions and uh, having a, a good intention in all of our actions. Uh, just to quickly conclude maybe today's show, I want to pose just a few questions for you, inshallah. And remember, discuss these questions with your families, amongst yourselves, and you can find the answers on the show's website, inshallah. There's a downloadable pack where you could download the answers, inshallah. So the first question I'd like to ask everyone is that how do you say the word intention in Arabic? Nice simple question to start off with, inshallah ta'ala. How do you say the word intention in Arabic? The second question is, what is the reality of uh, the intention? What is the reality of the niyyah? We, ex we explained about the, the nature and the essence of it. What is the nature of the uh, intention? And the final question is, why is it so important to study the topic of ikhlas, sincerity, and uh, reforming or rectifying one's uh, intentions. And just to re-emphasize that the fact that this show is really for the entire uh, family, so inshallah, bring, make sure you bring all your family members together, inshallah, uh, to benefit from this show, inshallah ta'ala. So hopefully, inshallah, we will see you all uh, tomorrow. Jazakumullah khayran. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Shadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Honey, I'm home. Kids, that's it. Coming, Mom. Assalamu alaikum, Dad. Wa alaikum assalam. Are you ready?